Hey folks, Rob Avis here. Today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the Hull Services Passive Solar Greenhouse in Calgary, Alberta. This greenhouse is truly amazing. It's been operating for a number of years now and it brings together geothermal heat storage with some passive solar technology and Vaden, who's going to be guiding you through the tour of the greenhouse, is going to show how sustainability and science are merged together in this structure and how he uses it for therapy and for outdoor education with the students that he engages with on a daily basis. So let's go take a look inside the greenhouse and see what Vaden's got going on. My name is Vaden Summers. We're here in Southwest Calgary at uh, Hull Services Garden and Greenhouse Program. The greenhouse and garden is uh, designed as a therapeutic milieu for kids who have complex mental health needs. We started with the greenhouse, which was completed in 2017. And then since then, we've added about a half acre of market garden space. We got a new caterpillar tunnel. We're big on designing out therapeutic spaces where we kind of control what's happening in the space. There's a variety of different milieus that work really well with engaging kids, of course, like outdoor education. We have a really cool skateboard program that we're doing here. All these milieus are a unique opportunity for counselors like myself to engage kids somewhere where they're feeling a little bit more relaxed. It's a, a very sensory rich place the garden is, of course. There's lots of things to touch, smell and feel. So the kids are a little bit more relaxed in this environment. So it gives us a lot of opportunities to prompt teachable moments where we can have tough conversations with kids or get a little bit deeper into some of the things that they're, uh, they're dealing with. Usually every year we have a couple of five-year-olds all the way up to 18-year-olds. Some parts of the school are accessing it for work experience programs. So we have kids that are coming through that are actively participating in building the space. And then we have curriculum integration in the space where teachers are using it to teach science or uh, plant life. Some of our kids who are coming from off campus, they have, they're dealing with food scarcity issues at home too. So a lot of time we'll be providing food um, for, for the kids that go to school here. So they're accessing the space in a different way than, than the other kids. And then the little guys, it's just a free for all out here, like carrot picking and, and throwing and running around. And so the space gets used in a variety of different ways. I mean, nothing freezes in there, so it's a really nice place to come. There's tons of free vitamin D streaming through the uh, polycarbonate. So the kids spend lots of time in there, just as an outdoor space that's enclosed and comfortable. There's a muted uh, a sensory experience happening in there. When you're in the space, you definitely know you're in a living system. When our production numbers got to the point where we realized our yields are high enough that we can start sending food off site, and we reached a little deeper into the network here at Health Services and realized there's a huge demand for uh, nutrient-dense food in the communities, especially people who are dealing with food scarcity issues. So we reached out to our partners at Patch, and these hubs are selectively put through the city. And in the last couple of years, what we've found has worked really well is we just invite the families to come to us. They'll either bring them in, in vans or people will come themselves in their own vehicles. And they're just accessing the farm as if it was uh, their own. Passive Solar Greenhouse is a highly insulated system. This one's facing 15 degrees southeast. It's maximized for uh, light exposure through all seasons. And then the walls are highly insulated. This Passive Solar Greenhouse has an ICF uh, foundation wall. So it goes down about five and a half, six feet. There's footings on the bottom. The walls are built with ICF, so it's like an insulated concrete form material. There's a, an annualized geosolar system or a climate battery at the bottom. We fill that all in, and then the soil that's encapsulated in the walls of the greenhouse becomes your thermal mass, and then you're collecting heat through your climate battery into that thermal mass, and then pushing that heat back into the greenhouse when it's, when it's calling for it. When we start seeds, usually starts around February, we start seeding trays out in the wood shop. And then as things get progressively warmer, which was very slow this year, we start moving things out here to the Passive Solar Greenhouse. We'll kind of wait till the first of March. For me, it's a good time because school breaks for March break. So I can get everything in the ground before I leave. Everything's automated, so watering happens on its own and things there's enough light to kind of boost growth. This stuff is starting to get harvested now. In the next week or so, then tomatoes come in and this primarily becomes a tomato house in the summer. We have them on tomahooks. Tomatoes grow all the way to the high point of the roof, like 14, 16 feet. And they produce all the way through the summer right into November. And then we have a bunch of perennials in the greenhouse. We have a himrod grape from California, which last year it produced three times through the year. And we have a fig, he'll grow up all in through the roof to match the growth of the grape. So this is the uh, intake 
For the climate battery, we have two exhaust fans. They're 550 CFM exhaust fans. The climate battery is pulling hot air from the top of the greenhouse, pulling it down into the ground. Underneath, it's connected through perforated weeping tiles. The soil that we're standing on becomes your thermal mass, and then it's hooked onto a thermostat. When the thermostat reaches its uh, hot threshold, then it turns on and sucks hot air out. When it reaches its cold threshold, then it starts up and will start pushing the hot air that's stored in the ground up through the exhaust fans. This environment is close to perfect for growing right now. It's about 24, 23 degrees Celsius. Humidity is nice and high. The AGS turns on first through the night and you can kind of see as it's slowly declining in temperature, the a natural gas heater kind of turns on. We usually, through the winter, we set it at five or seven degrees Celsius. Through the spring, when we start bringing plants in, we bump that up to about 12 degrees Celsius. But the natural gas heater generally in the shoulder seasons is only turning on for about two hours or three hours in the morning. And then we can support uh, like plants like our, our fig and our, and our grape. We have some artichokes that, that overwinter. We have a mulberry, a bunch of different kind of flower species. We got a bunch of strawberries that grow all through the winter. So we're gradually starting to build out our perennial system. We have a, a big project coming up this uh, summer. We brought in a bunch of different partners from the, from the community, different stakeholders on, on this job. And we're designing out on the north side where we just walked in the door. There's gonna be a kitchen and production facility there where we can manage our produce that's coming off the garden. Now that we know there's a resource to be taking in and a place for it to go, is we want to be efficient as we can through that process. And then we're putting in a pond and an outdoor classroom space. So that'll kind of round out the system. So we're trying to build efficiency in our system so that we can really show that you can create this much food for your community on a quarter acre of land. Given a couple of years of proving this system and providing data and providing a template that we can kind of source out to other organizations in the city is to say, here, here's something that we've put the work in, we've designed it this way so that it sits on a half acre or a quarter acre we're producing X amount of pounds of food per year for the community. It's a therapeutic space. Have all those things lined up so a community can actually look at this template and say, hey, that's something that we can pull off in our community. Every school in every town should have a farm like this that's producing food. I mean, there's, no, there's absolutely no excuse at this point. You can reach out to me on Instagram at uh, hall underscore greenhouse. And if you want to contact me directly, just give me a direct message through Instagram. If this video piqued your interest on passive solar greenhouses and you started thinking about how to get your own greenhouse onto your property, then you want to check out the course that we have coming up just around the corner. We've meticulously crafted this step-by-step -step approach that any enthusiast can come and take the program, design their own greenhouse, and then hand those plans to a builder to build their very own space that will allow them to grow food year round. If you're interested in learning more about this course, then make sure you check the link in the show notes down below. Hope to see you soon.